What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LaVon Maynard. Hey, welcome to the show. What is going on? Welcome to Tuesday's episode. So yesterday we talked about uh, some cyber crooks that are framing targets uh, in, in India um, by fabricating evidence. Pretty interesting topic, um, just a little, a little different than what we uh, we normally see when it comes to hacktivists and, and things of that nature. Um, on Wednesday, we're gonna have a discussion about uh, Maryland cyber uh, nonprofit um, center creation. It's pretty cool. Definitely something uh, I want to discuss about the, the future of cybersecurity. Uh, Thursday, will, there will be no Ask a CISP this week. Um, I may, I'm going to start breaking out clips of older ones anyway. I kind of want to put topics out there. So on the weeks that I don't have someone new to interview, I'll, I'll try to still pull up some material for that week. Um, and then Friday, we talk about everything else, right? That's our episode. We talk about video games, music, whatever, um, books, movies, whatever we did for the week, just to unwind. So uh, definitely something to tune in to as well as use our longer episode where we just get to, you know, hang out, but, um, definitely tune out, tune in, not tune out, sorry, tune in <laughs> throughout the week to hear what we have to, to talk about. But without further ado, I give it to LeVon. Yes, sir. So today we got a, we got an article from infosecuritymagazine.com. This is from uh, Sarah Cobble. Uh, the article's title is called prison for Nintendo pirate. And this article is basically describing, um, it's, you know, tells the, the situation around a leader of the hacking, hacking group, Team Executor, um, who has been sentenced to prison for participating in piracy, conspir piracy conspiracy against multiple gaming companies. Uh, and the Canadian national, uh, Gary Bowser, kind of like the Nintendo uh, Bowser. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Bowser. It's such a... <laughs> Interesting. I, I, had to, I had to Google it. I had to make sure they weren't just making fun of him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. That's really his name. Yeah. yeah. His real name is Gary Bowser. And it's just like, you know, and he's, you know, getting, getting uh, put to jail thanks to Nintendo. Uh, and then I think the, I want to say the, the the new CEO or the current leader of Nintendo America is like something Bowser as well. Uh, so it's kind of interesting, all these Bowsers running around the world, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it was such a common name, right? <laughs> yeah. It's so common. Like, yeah, I never heard it before, like Nintendo. And now I see several people with the name of it, but nonetheless, uh, he's also known as Gary OPA. Um, and he's arrested in Dominica Republic in September, 2020 on suspicion of creating and selling illegal software and devices that enable users to play pirated games. I'm sorry, pirated copies of authentic game titles on hacked consoles. Uh, the consoles are against which the devices were effective, included Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo D 3DS, the Nintendo Entertainment System Classic Edition, the Sony PlayStation Classic, and Microsoft's Xbox. Uh, Bowser, who's age 52, was charged with 11 felony counts, including conspiracy to commit wire, wire fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy to circumvent technological uh, measure, measures and traffic in circumvention devices trafficking and circumvention devices and conspiracy to commit money laundering uh and that's a mouthful it's interesting they have including conspiracy to commit wire fraud wire, wire fraud and then they have wire fraud as a separate like charge it's uh, it's kind of interesting how they you know how these courts come up with these different like charging like sec sections to, to, to kind of uh right. to uh go after people but yeah, he's two, two different versions of wire fraud, which is, uh, uh, so, yeah. But anyway, um, you know, he did not do any wrongdoing, um, but he ev eventually um, pled guilty in October, 2021 to one count of conspiracy to get circumvent technological measurements and measures and traffic and circumvention devices and one counter trafficking and circumvention devices and agreed to pay Nintendo a restitution of $4.5 million. Um, but that's really apparently to what one of the attorneys uh, that may just be a drop in the bucket compared to how much they estimate his damage. Uh, the piracy scheme is estimated to have caused more than $65 million uh, million dollars in losses to video game companies. Um, so, and plus they say it goes beyond the the business itself because it also harms the video game developers and, and the small creative studios who produce the, the hard work and who products and hard work is essentially stolen when games are pirated. So yeah, this is a really interesting article. I mean, 
but besides the guy's name Bowser and he's attacking Nintendo and Nintendo's now putting him in jail. Uh, besides that, it's just the fact that, you know, I know these industries are starting to come, come crack down hard on some of these pirators um, that have been taking, um, you know, selling their games off or making them available for free or whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever the situation is. Um, and for them to be cracking down so hard on this individual, um, putting them in jail, making them pay back $4.5 million. Um, it's, it's a, uh, it's a pretty, um, a pretty big lesson for people out there that are kind of in the same industry, trying to make money, trying to pirate games. Uh, cause you never know, Nintendo might come after you. They have a Mario in a cape coming after you. He's like a superhero trying to like squash the pirates and stuff like that. <laughs> coming after you like Bowser, he'll, he'll treat you like a Bowser, uh, and put you in jail. So, uh, you guys got to be on the, on the lookout, you know, you got to uh, keep your, uh, uh, I don't know, just be, be aware of like, of this kind of thing and, and try to avoid any kind of like piracy websites and things like that. You may get hemmed up in some of these uh, litigations at, at some point, uh, if they're starting to look at Bowser's, uh, 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 his, uh, his top customers and see who's been paying for all these like pirated video games and stuff like that. So it's pretty interesting stuff, but Shannon, you have some thoughts on this one? So, so I do, right? So I want, I want to preface what I'm going to say with, I'm not for anyone pirating or this is pretty much stealing from a video game company, right? right. But th these losses are definitely overestimated. 65 million, they estimate they lost. Right. That's right. So it's like, it's like when you ever read, like I remember when I was still in, I used to read how much they say they would spend, you know, to put us through basic and the training and all this. And I'm like, look, I know what I ate and I know how I slept when I was down at Lackland and it didn't cost that much. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you didn't pay that much for me to be there for that amount of time. That's just not an accurate figure. You know what I'm saying? But um, that figure just seemed way off for me. It was six, 65 million or 64 million. Yeah, it was. 65, yeah, 64 yeah. million and it was like 4.5 in restitution or whatever it was. Yeah. Whatever you say that. But I'm like, that, that number is too high. But so this kind of... What it made me think about was the conversation we were having last week about video games, right? So like all the... Uh, the um, um, these companies that are acquiring, um, you know, these designers, these game designers and whatnot. And we're talking right. about, I was of the impression, I was like, I don't know how Nintendo is going to be able to stay ahead. Well, this might be how, right? Like they just, <laughs> they, no, no, I'm being serious though, right? Stop, like they, stop, they, stop the leaks. Yeah. There you <laughs> right. go. There right. you go. So like, they don't, they don't have to do too much more. They don't have to acquire any companies just to make sure what, what's theirs stays theirs. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, this was interesting, man. And the fact, 40 months, he got 40 months for this. That's over three years for this. I'm like, oh, man, they'd be, they'd, right. they'd be real about this. You know what I'm saying? Ryan, Ryan, you said it offline, man. You were like, man, Nintendo's being petty. <laughs> like, yeah, they kind, of, <laughs> they kind of are. You know what I'm saying? But uh, no, Ryan, I'll pass it to you, man. What, what's your thoughts on it? Oh, yeah, definitely. So I was going to make a bad pun, like Nintendo don't play or something like that. I'm not doing that, though. I might put it on the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> I might put it on the thumbnail. Um, no, they, they they always are aggressive to their IP. Like, they do not play when it comes to people pirating ROMs and stuff like that. Like, it could be a game um, from, like, the back of their catalog that no one has played in, in decades, and Nintendo will sue you for millions for if you pirate mm -hmm. that ROM. I've never been big into playing pirated ROMs. Like, it's never been my thing. Um, like people are like, oh, I got a thousand games. Like, uh, I don't have time for a thousand games. So why would, you know what I mean? Like, why would I download <laughs> right. that file? I'm just wasting, I'm just wasting gigs of, of storage for things I'll never play. Um, but Nintendo has always been aggressive about their, uh, their uh, IP. Like they, they do not care who you are or how long they need to put you away. Uh, but the reason I, I, I grabbed it for cybersecurity topic, because um, uh, it, it dwells deep into privacy, right? And it's just the digital forensics it took to figure out $65 million is what, it's probably because Nintendo games don't go on sale. So they charge a full price plus inflation. Like that game came out in 1983. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and this many people uh, downloaded. We would have we charged 50 for it. Like, you know how many times I bought uh, Mario for um, every time there's a new generation? Like I buy the original Mario for five bucks. How many $5 purchases they got out of me? Mm -hmm. um, they just uh, calculated it all up. But I thought in particular, it was just the, the community that had to come together to... Um, to prosecute, right? So it says Nintendo's and in their um, statement, in particular, Nintendo would like to thank the Federal Bureau of Investigations, Homeland Security Investigations, Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Washington, the U.S. Department of Justice's Criminal Crime and Intelligence Property Section, and the Justice Department's Office of Int 
in international affairs for their significant contribution and assistance. Like this was a full scale um, uh, community. Uh, like this was a team <laughs> that came together to find this guy. And he, I guess he tried to escape overseas because he's Canadian, um, but they found him in, uh, in the DR. So he, he obviously was making enough money where he could just play, all right, <laughs> chuck the deuces and then try to dip overseas. Um, I'm sure they froze his assets and they recovered their money, like whatever monies they could, yada, yada, yada. I didn't know ROM piracy was um, that um, lucrative, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I had no clue. I had no clue. I, I could see for like big budget, like current games, but apparently like even, even the old school catalogs um, can net you some, some crazy profit. So just don't do it. Like, like I always talk about privacy, piracy um, uh, at work when I, cause I work with younger people who, you know, that they may dabble a little bit like, nah, man, that, that, that game or that movie or that, that, uh, that song is not worth it. Like just buy the subscription. <laughs> Because I'd rather pay twelve dollars a month than uh, apparently he's paying like what is it fourteen million or something like that? Rest dude, something ridiculous. Four point five um, million. Four point five million. Yeah. Four point five million in restitution. Like I don't think those equate. So, <laughs> like, stay stay safe, basically. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, like I, IP is is a thing, right? Like it goes into the triangle: the the confidentiality, integrity. Um, and uh availability like availability. yeah you're, you're hurting their supply and demand you're putting uh constraints on them that they this is money that they want to make and then you're over here dabbling and selling their um their their intellectual properties they will aggress on you um and uh, apparently it was worth the fbi's uh and homeland security's efforts they were like you know what we're gonna go get this guy so i'm sure he's not the i'm not sure he's not the the, the first thing won't be the last um so if you're out there, uh, you know, hosting servers with Nintendo stuff on it. You probably want to stop doing that, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Because they will they will get you as well. But that should be any game company. But I've seen I've seen Nintendo headlines uh, every couple of years. They're getting somebody. This is the highest I've ever seen though. Um, probably because last name was Bowser. They took it personally. <laughs> They're like, and we want his name too. <laughs> but, 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 right. but think about it he's 50 52 or 54 however old he was yeah, right? 52, like 52. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's before that character ever even was created right so like you can't sit there and be like oh, we, want the, we want the name too yeah like, right i think it was you're telling me you're yeah. telling me yeah. mario was created in the 70s like come on because if he's 52 what was the what was the the arcade machine where it had the, the the buttons you had to hit like how old is that one is that still the 80s that's the 80s i don't like, know yeah. is that they still the 80s have... okay because Bowser wasn't even around until like the original Mario Brothers, I don't think. Like when oh, because he's fighting thing. he's fighting Donkey Kong in the in that one. Yeah, right? he's running up right. the ladders. Yeah, you're right. right. You're right. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't really he a character. Should say. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he should That's say. right. Y'all took my name. He stole my name. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty wild. But again, you you shouldn't feel bad for somebody who's out there stealing, right? So, um, you don't don't do the the crime if you can't do the time. But uh, definitely interesting conversation. I'm glad we got to slip some some uh, some game stuff in there uh, during the week. Definitely tune in um, Monday through Friday. Again, Monday and Tuesday are topics. Wednesday's discussion. Thursday's ask us SP or whatever material I, I can put up during that uh, that week. And then Friday is everything else. So we do the weekly rundown. Um, hit up the website www.theothersideofthefirewall.com. You can tell our social medias. Get me up personally. I'm at Ryry Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. I'm on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, TikTok, and Twitter. And you, LeVon? Hit me up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure. Take care.